Shalom, it's Joanna again. Okay, moving on to the add and scramble verses and the mistranslation verses. Um, I'm just using the verses provided me by Christians. If you want to, I really suggest that you go take a look um, at the New Testament. Read through the verses where the, um, the New Testament supposedly quotes the Old Testament. And, um, take a look and see consist whether um, the uh, verses are consistent with the verses they're supposed to be quoting. Most of the time, they are not. Most of the time, you can clearly see that the um, verse was purposely altered. In terms of verses I want to look at in the scramble column, on this video, um, we've got Daniel 9, verse 26. After those 62 weeks, the anointed one will disappear and vanish. The army of the leader who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, but its end will be through a flood. Desolation is decreed to the end of the war. During one week will he make a firm covenant with many. For half a week will he put a stop to the sacrifice, and the meal offering at the corner of the altar will be an appalling abomination unto the um, decreed destruction will be poured down upon the appalling thing. Now, the reason this passage um, is not about Jesus is, uh, well, in short, there's a lot of reasons, but in short, when we read from verse 24 down, it says that, um, that there will be a one-week period, and then the seven-week period, and um, then 62 weeks, and um, basically... Uh, the Messiah shows up at the beginning of um, the 62 weeks, encourages everybody to build the temple. They build for 62 weeks, and then there's a war. The temple is destroyed. He comes back and rebuilds it. But um, somehow during this time of the 62 weeks, he is despised and rejected, and... Um, but at the end of the war, he's um, seen and accepted. That's where the verse comes in. Um, your guide shall no more be ignored, uh, but your eyes will see your guide. And uh, he shall no more be hid from your eyes, and you shall hear a voice behind you. This is the way you walk therein. That needs a video of its own, and I'm really, really not going to try to get into the details here. But um, that's the gist of it. In my opinion. Oh, and just to quote in a, uh, throw in a quote, almost positive it's from Rambam, that um, we don't know what's going to happen. So, um, okay, uh, next one. Um, 2 Samuel 7, verse 14. I will be a father to him, and he shall be my son. Okay, please finish the verse off, Christians. When he does wrong, I will chastise him with the rod of men and with the affliction of mortals. Um... So, if you want to say this is about Jesus, please say that he did wrong. Uh, next. First Chronicles 17, 11 to 14. When your days are done and you follow your fathers, this is God speaking to David. I will raise up your offspring after you, one of your own sons, and he, I will establish his kingship. He shall build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me, but I will never withdraw my favor from him as I withdrew it from your predecessor. Um, like the last one, this is not a messianic verse. It's about Solomon. And um, how do we know that? We know because it says, he shall build a house for me. Uh, Jesus didn't do that. So um, this is not a messianic verse and it's not about Jesus. Moving on to famous mistranslations. Um, Perhaps the most famous is Isaiah 7.14 about the virgin birth. Um, the word is not virgin. The word is made. And uh, when you read it in context, this is a decontextualized and um, mistranslated verse, but I liked to put it, with, I chose to put it in the um, mistranslation video. Um, but when you read it in context, it says, The Lord spoke further to Ahaz, asked for a sign 
from the Lord your God anywhere from um, down to Sheol or up to the sky. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not test the Lord. Listen, house of David, Isaiah retorted, is it enough? Is it not enough for you to treat man as helpless, that you treat my God as helpless? Assuredly, the Lord himself will give you a sign of his own accord. Look, the young woman is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name Emmanuel. By the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good, people will be feeding on curds and honey. For before the lad knows to reject the bad and choose the good, the ground whose two kings you dread shall be abandoned. The Lord will cause you to come the Lord will cause to come up upon you and upon your people and your ancestral house such days as has never um, come since Ephraim turned away from Judah, that self same king of Assyria. This is not about um Jesus, it's not even about a time in the future. It's talking about right then and right there. Isaiah was in front of Ahaz, and um, Ahaz was uh, having some issues with some foreign kings. And as a sign, Isaiah pointed to a young woman that was pregnant and said, Look, um, she's about to give birth, and before the child um, is mature, these political issues that you're worried about will be taken care of. Next is Isaiah 9, 6. Um, King James Version says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Um, reading it from the JPS, for, unto us, for a child has been born to us, a son has been given us, and authority has settled on his shoulders. He has been named the Mighty God is Planning Grace the Eternal Father, a peaceable ruler. Read the next verse too. In token of abundant authority and of peace without limit upon uh, David's throne and kingdom, that it may be firmly established in justice and in equity now and evermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall bring it to pass. Um, so this is talking about the um, Davidic line is going to continue. Um, doo -doo -doo. It could be messianic. Um, but it it's not calling the Messiah God. Ah, last very famous one from Psalm 22. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of wicked men has encircled me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots upon my clothing. That's uh, the crucifixion, right? Well, um, if you were to actually translate it, a better translation would be dogs surround me a pack of evil ones close in on me like lions they maul my hands and feet um i take the count of all my bones while they look on me and gloat they divide my clothes among themselves casting lots for my garments read some other translations it really doesn't say they pierce my hands and my feet it says they um they maul them it's more in the sense of being devoured um, as by lions.